make the dumb to talk and open up the eyes of the blind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Well, the windows of heaven are open. God's blessings are flowing tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I've traded my old tattered garment for a vivid, spotless, and white. Feasting on manna from heaven. That's why we're happy to of heaven are open, blessings are flowing tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I traded my old tattered garments for that is spotless and white, feasting on manna from heaven. Why we're happy tonight. Heaven of heaven are open. Blessings are flowing tonight. Joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I've traded my old tattered garment to the spotless and You were forsaken, I'm accepted, and you were condemned. I'm alive and well, and your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be? My king would die for me. Amazing love, and I know that it's true. It's my joy to honor you. Let all I do honor you. I'm forgiven.
you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. This is my story. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight again, as I've always said, in confidence, because He is able, isn't He? Come on, the Scripture plainly says that He is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. So that means God goes beyond what we even ask for in Jesus' name. But our part is, is to have faith in Him, faith in God, praise God. That is one of the, what I would consider the senior doctrines of Christ, faith in God. And so tonight, let's exercise that faith. If you've got needs tonight, this is the right time to just present them to the Lord, and let's do that. Come on, let's have confidence and faith in the Lord in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm so glad that we can come together. You say in your word, Lord God, that we are not to fail to assemble ourselves. And Lord God, that's what we try to do here every week in Jesus' name. Touch and strengthen everyone here, Lord God, that's what I pray for. I pray that you will touch us, Lord God, and help us to be not only right with you, but Lord Jesus, to increase our faith in this place right now. If there's any physical, if there's any emotional, if there's any spiritual healings that need to take place, Lord God, I have the utmost confidence in what you can do right here, right now. In Jesus' name. And Lord God, I claim it. I, Lord Jesus, claim these things by the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. That's right. Lord God, I push out every ounce of darkness because your word proclaims the light. And Lord Jesus, in doing that right now, Lord God, I present this place wholly unto you. This is your place. This is your word. This is your spirit. God, you can do whatever you want, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Strengthen, Lord God, your church. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Lord God. I'm so glad, Lord Jesus, that we can come and we can learn and we can imply ourselves to what you have to say in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, I give you the praise and the glory. Why don't we just push through? Come on, let's praise the Lord. Blessed be to the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you are, you are an awesome God. An awesome God. Oh, he's an awesome God. Praise you, Jesus. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Oh, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, there's just nothing like him. Nothing like the Lord in Jesus' name. If you want to, you can be seated. Praise God. Sister Carnahan, are we going to get those things up on the screen? Um, Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. While she's doing that, I, I'm, I'm going to bring your attention to um, the Word of God. Um, of course, the uh, Scripture tonight, or one of the Scriptures that we'll be dealing with. I'm sorry. You have ta- papers for anybody that doesn't have a book. Okay, that's right. Okay, so you are, we are all set up tonight. Thank you so much for doing that. Amen. Um, Tonight we're going we're gonna to be looking into spiritual healing, which in my opinion is extremely important. I think it's sometimes overlooked because of some of the physical ramifications that come with not being spiritually healed. And um, listen, folks, if it was not for God's forgiveness, we would all be sick. We would, but I'm thankful that God does give us the opportunity every day to, um, um, you know, to, to have that, to have that in our lives. Um, And so hopefully tonight this will remind you of something and and, um, you can go ahead and take take the initiative to do that. The scripture reading here tonight in 1 Peter chapter number 2, verses 24 through 25. I don't know if you have your Bibles tonight, but I I glanced at this or I saw this last night and I really do feel like we need to extend the reading here. I think it will help help us to kind of get what I call the full story. Praise God. Um, uh, chapter number two of First Peter is dealing with the church, of course. That's what where the epistles go on the most part. Um, some people struggle with that. Sometimes they're looking for, um, 
you know, uh, the plan of salvation in the epistles, and of course there's plenty of places where they do present themselves. But on the most part, always remember this, the epistles were written to churches on the most part that already received the plan of salvation. The challenges that were in that day are the same challenges that are in this day, and that is living for God on a consistent basis. Amen. Living for God consistently and, 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 and doing what, what uh, the apostles were telling us, that we got to learn to take some things off, and then we have to learn to put some things on. It's just, you know, I know that sounds very simple, but it really is. That's what it is. And so this is what uh, the epistles help us to do. In the second chapter here of 1 Peter, he is dealing with that. He's dealing with what God has really called us to be. And that is so important that we catch that vision on a regular, I would say on a daily basis. God has called us to be something, not just to do something. Amen. Um, the first chapter of the book of John, um, and I feel like somebody needs to hear this, so I'm just going to say it. The first chapter of the book of John refers to the fact that there was a time when Jesus came that people didn't receive him. Amen. Um, I talked to a young man today in, in one of my Bible studies that he um, believed in the historical Christ, but he didn't believe that Jesus was God. And we prayed. I said, I hope that God, or not hope, but I believe that God can show you. Amen. Because it's all in Jesus. Amen. That's where really where you're going to get true biblical salvation. Uh, but Jesus, the Bible says in the first chapter of the book of John, the Gospel of John, it says, to them that did receive Jesus, to them he gave the power. What do you say power? And that's really authority there. He gave authority to us to become the sons of God. And so in my opinion, that's one of the processes that's happening down here. We are becoming sons of God. We're not there yet. Now, I'm not saying we don't, you know, have our highs and our lows, but, I mean, the bottom line is we are not there. The Bible says, if you, and this is what's kind of tricky about scriptures, you've got to put it all together. And in the last book of the Bible, the book of the Revelation, um, the scripture talks about he that overcometh all things. That's what being a son is all about, is overcoming everything in this life in this life that is not godly. And God has given us the power to achieve that. Can somebody say amen? And you might have stumbled today, but uh, the point of it is is that God has given you power to do that, okay? What I'm going to do is begin the reading here tonight in verse 21. I know you've got 24 and 25 that's up there, but I want to begin in verse 24, or 21, rather. It says, for even hereunto were you called. Everybody say, I was called. To what? It says, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow whose steps? Yeah, we follow his steps. That's what we're doing. And then it goes on to say in verse 22, who did no sin. Jesus didn't commit any sins. It says, neither was guile, you know, found in his mouth. He didn't rail at anybody. He didn't get exceedingly upset when people didn't live the way he, you know, the way they should have. And then it says, um, who, in verse number 23 there, when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. What you're doing right there in that, in that verse of scriptures, you're seeing a picture of the man, Christ Jesus. That's what he had to do. He had to judge. He had to say, well, God, the Spirit, knows what he's doing. Anybody found themselves in that kind of a place? Yeah, we do all the time. And then it says in verse 24, who his own self, now this is where we're picking it up here, it says, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that's the cross, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. Can somebody say amen? It says, for ye were, and all of us were as sheep going astray, but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. That is so important that we, be, that we, we see that reality, okay? Now listen to me, folks, very carefully here. Just because you have been baptized in Jesus' name and received the Holy Ghost doesn't mean that you never sin. It just means that sin no longer has the bondage and sin no longer has the lock on you that it used to. And you can celebrate that fact. Now, that shouldn't give us a license just to go out and live willy-nilly, but what it should do is give us that power and that victory that you and I have. And that's really what spiritual healing is all about. Spiritual healing has to do with what Jesus Christ did at Calvary. And he broke the bondage of sin. And you and I, we have, we have absolutely the power now 
through Christ Jesus to live the way he wants us to live. Now, not an absolutely perfect life, but we can live a victorious life. Come on, somebody needs to say amen to that. Whether you feel that way or not, you have been given power to live a victorious life. Praise God. And that's what spiritual healing brings into your life. That's why we got to have it every day. Now, I'm going to, sometime during this Bible study, I'm going to give you what I consider a good biblical understanding of how that, how this works. And hopefully you can see this, praise God. But let's, let's continue on here, praise God. He is the one that did it. He's the one that did it, and we didn't deserve it. Now, last week we talked about the fact that um, this all began with the fall in the garden. That's why there's a need in this world right now, because Adam and Eve sinned. And the scripture says in Genesis 3 and 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And this is a direct reference to the ministry of Jesus Christ. This is what was coming, praise God. God, the Bible says, and in, in fact, the scripture says that Jesus was the, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So God knew where he was going with this. Amen. And so you and I, we must, we must have confidence in this process. Amen. I, I got a feeling today, I can sense it in this place today, that a few of you have fallen. You've had some struggles. There's been some things in your life that you're really, really, really struggling with. Well, I want you to understand that spiritual healing tonight is for you in the name of Jesus. And that comes, in my, uh, my opinion, uh, the best way it comes is when we accept God's forgiveness in our lives. Does anybody want to just stop for about 15 seconds and just lift up your hands right now and ask God to forgive you? Just say, God, I, I know that you are, you are, my, you are the one that, that, that died for my sins in the name of Jesus. And I claim this tonight in the name of Jesus. I claim this in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Oh, I feel that tonight. There's just a tremendous, tremendous bloodbath in this place, and that's not a negative thing. That's the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is what does that, folks. Nothing else can bring that. Nothing else can bring that. Amen. Some of you have done a little bit of a study of the Old Testament, and you know that animal sacrifice was an important part of the Old Testament, praise God, that without that blood going into the Holy of Holies and poured onto the mercy seat, I'm going to tell you something, folks, Israel didn't have any hope. But aren't you glad that there was a supreme sacrifice made by Jesus Christ? Oh, hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're talking about. Mm, in the name of Jesus, and I am so thankful, praise God, amen. And so you and I, we can rest assured in that. And then John 3 and 16, of course, you know, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. There's the motivation. There's the motivation behind God is that he loves us, amen. And as I've always said, God doesn't love everything, but he makes his love available to each and every one of us. Every person in this world can receive the love of God. Amen. And I hope that that will happen. I really do. Amen. That's the intention of God. Amen. And so spiritual healing is extremely important. And it's very important that you and I understand exactly what it is in Jesus' name. Now, you must understand that God's plan was revealed, amen, after the fall. He already revealed that. That's why we talked about that scripture in Genesis. God already said, listen, this is, this is a stumbling block, but we've, I've already set something in motion that's going to bring, amen, eternal victory in Jesus' name. Aren't you glad? And, you know, we talked about this a few weeks back, and maybe it's now it's been maybe even months ago, but we understand that the mission of Jesus can be, can be contained in this verse right here, for the Son of Man. I'm talking about the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. Or was lost, yeah. Aren't you glad that he sought for you? Amen. And I am too. I'm, I'm extremely glad. That's what God gave to you and I in Jesus' name. And so um, uh, God has made this all available for you and I. He's made it available each and every day. Amen. Um, you know, in the Old Testament, particularly in the book of Exodus, this is where um, 
of course, Moses goes up into the mountain, remember that? And he spends 40 days up there, and of course, he comes down, and, um, and the people of Israel were impatient, and they got involved in their old ways again. They begin to, um, they literally asked Aaron to make them the idol that they had there in Egypt. Um, but to make a long story short here, you know, uh, God, again, you know, in his uh, wisdom and in his knowledge and also in his forgiveness, you know, he implemented a plan in which they could, um, um, uh, they could, they could approach him. And that plan in the Old Testament, of course, had to do with the tabernacle. Amen. How many thanks God for the tabernacle? Amen. Of course, we understand that in the New Testament, you know, that we become the tabernacle of God. That's what the Scripture tells us. That's why it's very important that we, that we um, uh, maintain that kind of an attitude, that we allow God to show us some things, that we allow God to take some things out of our lives praise God, and put some things in there in Jesus' name. So, you know, the idea of it is, the Scripture says in Exodus 25, it says, and let them make me a sanctuary. Why? That I may dwell among them. Here's another one of the revealed plans of God. God has always wanted to be with us. Amen. And so this is, again, His desire. And, of course, you know, without spiritual healing, folks, you're really not going to get that. And that's why it's important for us to understand that God wants to put that spiritual healing not only into your life once, but he wants to make that a regular daily thing in Jesus' name. Amen. This is what helps us to draw close to God. Amen. It's not because we don't make any mistakes. It's because we know that he heals us through forgiveness in Jesus' name. And so cons consider that. I believe tonight God wants to help that. Now, his sacrifice at Calvary, this is what's important allows all of us to experience spiritual healing. That's where it took place. Amen. The book of Hebrews describes the fact that the blood of, of, um, of bulls and goats and all of those, of those animal sacrifices could never take away sin. It couldn't do that. The only thing it could do is roll it ahead to the time when the true Lamb of God was going to come and he was going to sacrifice for the remission of sins. That's why we believe it's important for us to understand that concept because it's the remission of sins that really brings and, uh, uh, spiritual healing and brings continual spiritual healing, praise God. Um, let me show you something here. I'm going to kind of divert from this just for just a second, but I want to show you something. Look at uh, 1 John, 1 John, the epistle of 1 John, and let me read some scripture to you. Somebody here needs to hear this. I can sense this right now. The first epistle of John in chapter number 1, the scripture says in verse number 7, it says, but if we walk in the light, everybody say the light. It says, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth. Do you see that? Do you see that word cleanseth? What that literally means is it's an ongoing process. God not only cleanses us when we ask for forgiveness, but he will continually cleanse us every time we come to him and ask for that. Do you see how, how cool that is? It says, from all sin, praise God. Because right, on, right, uh, right after that, it says, if we, it says, if we say that we have no sin, it says we deceive or we're lying to ourselves. And then it says, and the truth is not in us, but if we confess, everybody say confess. And really, when you confess to God, you're not telling him something he doesn't already know. What you are literally doing is agreeing with God. You're saying, God, I know and you know. This is what it is. That's why confession is such an important ingredient. It's not the only thing that we need to do, but it's one of the things that we need to become more and more and more comfortable with. Praise God. The Bible says if we confess our sins, who's going to be faithful? Come on, God is always faithful. He doesn't have an unfaithful bone in his body. Come on, that's when something you and I must remember. He isn't unfaithful. He's always faithful, praise God. And so the scripture says they're one of those ifs. And do you realize in the King James Version Bible, there's about fif over 1,500 of them in the Bible. And every time you see that, it's a conditional thing. Condition upon God? Oh, no, because God is always faithful. God doesn't need an if in his life. It's you and I that need the if. 
Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost ministering to somebody here right now. I feel like there's a healing touch that is here tonight in this place, this Wednesday Bible study for somebody in this room right here that you can realize, praise God, by, by repenting and confessing. And then when you were baptized in the name of Jesus, you applied the blood to your life. And you don't have to get back in that baptismal every time. All you need to do is be faithful, praise God, and come to God and say, God, I know that I'm not perfect, and I know that you already know that I'm not perfect, but I do know that you will forgive me. And I'm going to tell you something, folks, that will bring spiritual healing into your life instantaneously. Oh, hallelujah. I, 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 I really believe somebody's receiving this tonight, and that's more important than anything else. Oh, hallelujah. Wow, what a God we serve. What a God we serve. Praise God. Amen. Amen. And I mean, the liar, the devil, whatever, you know, even your flesh will tell you that you don't deserve it. And you can agree with them. You can say, hey, that's not even the issue. I don't get this because I deserve it. I get this because of the love of God. He loved me. I'm part of the world in the name of, oh, my goodness. That's what makes this a special package. Oh, hallelujah. My goodness. My goodness. The blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, folks, that's not butcher shop religion. That is the truth, praise God, that the blood of bulls and goats could never take away. It couldn't take it away. It took the blood of Jesus Christ. He was the innocent lamb. He was the second Adam. He was the one that lived in this world the way God intended for us to live here. Amen. And so I'm thankful tonight that you and I, we can go. And so again, his sacrifice at Calvary is what allows this to happen, praise God. And that's why you and I, we don't just celebrate Calvary once a year in the spring. We celebrate it or we should be celebrating it on a regular basis. Amen. And that's why, that's what God wants us to do in Jesus' name. And so here we are again, praise God. We can get the healing that God wants us to get. And listen to me, folks, I'll just introduce this thought right now. I really do feel like if we can consistently get spiritual healing in our life, I believe that a lot of our physical healing will come a whole lot easier. I think a lot of the reason we don't get uh, physical healing is because we, don't, because we know who we are. We know that, my goodness, if I was God, I wouldn't do that. Well, isn't it a good thing that you're not God? Yeah, I think it is too. I think it's a great idea that we're not God. God doesn't rely on how good you are. He relies on how powerful He is. And that's why you and I must understand that that spiritual healing needs to keep flowing into our lives, praise God. And we confess those promises, and God is faithful in the name of Jesus. And so again, praise God, we must understand that even in the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, which is referred to by a lot of theologians as the gospel in the Old Testament, it refers to a lot about God in that book and who he is and what he's doing. And in Isaiah 53, it says he was taken from the prison and from judgment. And who shall declare, this, declare his generation? It says, for he was cut out. It says cut off. Boy, I can't hardly see that, Sister Carnahan. I think it's because these lights are too bright. But um, can, can anybody else? Somebody stand up and read that, will they? Praise God. Just go up and stand, brother. Just read that scripture, would you? Yes. And that's why, again, you've got to understand, this is referring to Jesus. And incidentally, folks, this was 700 years before it happened. The book of Isaiah was written almost over 700 years before Jesus Christ came onto the scene. And so God was prophesying. Thank you, sis. I appreciate that. That's, that's better. That's a lot better. Thank you. And, and so, you know, God was letting the people know what was going to happen. Amen. But you and I, we don't have to have this prophesied to us. What we need to do is just receive it on a daily basis because we're behind this, praise God. It's already happened. And so you and I, we can claim this in the name of Jesus every day, praise God. And so that's why that significant scripture that we read, again, in, in 1 Peter, Peter is reminding them of some things. And he's reminding them who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. There it is. He's reminding the church that it's because of his blood being shed that you and I can have true spiritual healing in Jesus' name. It says, 
It says that we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye are healed. Praise God. And whose stripes are we healed? Can you call out his name? Yeah, there it is. He's the one that gets the credit. Now let me diverge here a little bit from this Bible study again because we've got plenty of time. I, I, I feel like we do anyway. Let me turn your attention to the book of Ephesians, another epistle that was written. Amen. And the scripture tells us in chapter number 2, Ephesians chapter number 2, listen to this. I think this is going to help somebody here tonight too. The scripture says in 2 and 1, Ephesians, it says, and you hath he quickened. Everybody say quickened. That just simply means he made us alive. It says, who were dead in trespasses and sins. That's where we were. Look at somebody and say, that's where I was. Yes. It says, where in time past, in verse 2, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation. What does that mean? That literally means that every person that's born into this world is stuck in the same rut that you and I were. You know, the beauty of this is, is we're not, we don't have to stay stuck in that rut, do we? Yes, and it says, in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But look at verse number four. This is what the good news is. It says, but God, what was he doing? The Bible says he is rich in mercy for his great love. It says, wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. Amen. There it is, my friend. God, God accepts the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made. And that's what brings spiritual healing. And let me just put it to you very bluntly right now. That is the only thing that can bring spiritual healing. You're trying to be good and you're trying to be, you know, the best person you are. I certainly don't want to discourage you from that. But that doesn't bring about spiritual healing. What that does is probably protect the, the, the package that it came in. In my opinion, that's why God gives us holiness so that we can have a place where we can contain this, praise God. But make no mistake about it, my friends. Your blood, my blood is never going to get this done. The only way it's going to get done is by us accepting the blood of Jesus Christ. And listen to me, that's like a lot of things in the Bible. That has to happen over and over and over and over again. That's what has to happen. And that's what God has given to us. And that's why you and I, we can claim this spiritual healing, praise God, because we've claimed who Jesus Christ is. That's why when Peter said, bless, you're the Christ, the son of the, of the living God, Peter immediately, re, or not Peter, but Jesus immediately responded and said, blessed. Blessed are thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. Amen. And so that's what gave him the ability to get the keys and everything else. And so you and I, we can, we can literally, literally have this every day in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Bible says in Mark chapter number 6 there, it refers to something here. But um, um, uh, uh, there was times when Jesus tried to introduce this, and probably the hang-up, or not probably, the, the definite hang-up had to do with people um, believing who he was, just like my young friend today. That's why I prayed for him, you know. He can study the Bible all he wants, you know, and I hope he does, and I think we did sow some seeds there so that to happen. But if he doesn't accept who Jesus Christ is, I'm going to tell you something. He's going to die in his sins. Do you realize that I'm not the author of that statement? Do you know who the author of that statement is? Jesus himself. Jesus told the Pharisees in the, in, the, in the book of John, he said, if you don't believe that I am he, you're going to die in your sins. Now, I know that's a serious statement. It is. But the good news is, is you don't have to. The good news is, is you and I can accept Jesus Christ. We can apply his blood to our lives, and I'm so thankful for that. Amen. And that's what brings spiritual healing into our lives in Jesus' name. Praise God. Can... can uh, can, do you remember, praise God, when you went down in that water? Amen. 
Is anybody besides me? I didn't really know fully what I was doing, but I knew I was doing something that God wanted me to do. I just, I sensed that, and I felt that, praise God. And my baptism was just on a Thursday afternoon where it was just me and the pastor. But there was something that was just being witnessed to me, praise God, when I went down in that old-fashioned horse tank and, and, and came out, praise God. There was a witness of God, and I, I don't want to tell you something, folks. The only thing, way I can describe it is I have never, ever, felt that clean before. Amen. And that's, that's, that's called applying the blood of Jesus Christ to your life. Amen. And that's, that's called not only having your sins forgiven, that's called getting your sins completely washed away or remitted in Jesus' name. And that's a big difference. That's where people need to go, in my opinion. But back to this scripture here. Here's Jesus, and he comes back to his hometown. And he's wanting to introduce the same thing to them that he introduced to you and I. But the Bible says they wouldn't believe him. They wouldn't believe who he was because they knew who, you know, they, they'd remembered him. You know, well, he's Joe's kid, you know, and he's this and he's that, praise God. But the Bible says because of that unbelief, look at what it says here, that he could there do no mighty work. Now listen, this is what you've got to get save that he could lay his hands on a few sick folks and heal them. Now, here's the point I'm making. What was the greater work? Think about that. See, sometimes we think the great work of God is the healing, physical healing. But I think what this is describing here is that Jesus not only wanted to heal people's bodies, but he wanted to show them the real, true plan of salvation. And that's what I'm talking about here tonight. That's what brings spiritual healing into a person. Now, I'm not saying that people who don't believe in the plan of salvation can't get physically healed. Oh, I've seen that happen. But listen to me, folks. I believe the greater thing is spiritual healing, which only comes through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so that's why you and I, we really do have something to rejoice in every day. If you've repented of your sins, if you've been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins and received his glorious spirit, praise God, I think what you ought to do is at least lift one of those hands and thank God for the plan of salvation that has been brought into your life. Come on, I'm telling you the truth here tonight, folks. This is what you and I got, got to be thankful for in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. And the scripture says something here also that I think is worth noting, that he marveled, flabbergasted. He was blown away. You ever done that? I've been around people like that. I've been trying to witness to them and that type of thing. And, and for some reason or another, they didn't want to receive what the Bible said. And I've walked away, and I've been the same way. I felt like, wow, how could they do that? But you see, God gives everybody a choice, doesn't he? He gives everybody a choice, and he marveled because of their unbelief. And the Bible says he, he, he didn't stay there. He went someplace else. And, you know, I think that God will do that. It's not that God won't come back, but it's, I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to get a whole lot of places without, um, um, you know, without having belief in Jesus Christ. Now, another story that demonstrates this also is also in the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Who's one of the characters in the third chapter of the Gospel of John, at least the first eight verses? Who's the guy there? Jesus is, but who's the guy that's, that, that Jesus is talking to? Nicodemus. And Nicodemus, as most of you already know, he was a religious guy. He knew what, how to go to church. He knew how to, you know, how to, uh, you know, how to do it from that, that angle. But Jesus came to him, or I should say he came to Jesus at night. And one of the first things that Jesus begins to teach him is what true what true spiritual healing is all about. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. You can sum it up called being born again. And not being born of our good works, but being born of the water. Everybody say the water. And of the Spirit. Jesus answered and said unto him, listen to this. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And again, I know we read this scripture and a lot of us, we take it for granted. But you'd be surprised how many people don't really realize that. In fact, I can tell you and I can point to a time in my life, praise God, before I started frequent, frequenting this ch a church like this, I can point to a time in my life where this scripture hit me right between the eyes. 
And you want to know what happened? I began to read this scripture, and I read it over, and I read it over again, and I said, that's Jesus saying that. Because prior to that, I had a little hang-up of churches. I had a problem with some of you people, you thinking that you're better than somebody else. Now, you didn't do that, but that was my thinking. But I'll tell you something. When God began to deal with me about, I'm saying this to you, I thought, I better, I better pursue this. And folks, about a year before I started frequenting a church like this, that's what I did. I began a real, real search. You know, I kind of felt that when I was talking to that young man today. I thought, God, give him a hunger, praise God, to start searching you out in the name of Jesus. Because you know something, folks? I believe that can happen. I don't care what the outer package looks like. I don't care what people have been through. Once they start seeking the Lord, I'm going to tell you something, all kinds of things can begin to happen. That's why I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to keep that attitude in my heart and in my mind. I'm going to keep seeking him in the name of Jesus. Praise God, because he is the one that brings real salvation. And, of course, we understand in John 3 and 5, he explained it. He said, and Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of the water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Again, I, I came to the place where I said, That's Jesus saying that, and I'd better take it serious. And I thank God that God helped me to do that in the name of Jesus. Because you and I must understand, and this is a prayer that I pray very often, folks. In 1 Timothy chapter number 2, um, you know, he talks about, you know, uh, praying for people, kings and things like that. And, and one of the reasons that is is because right here in verse number 4, God is not willing that any should perish, but God wants every person to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And in my opinion, that's one of the deepest definitions of real spiritual healing, is when a person comes to the place of salvation, that's when they can become spiritually healed, praise God. And that's what God wants to continue and maintain in our lives, regardless of what happens. Amen. Above all else, we sang it. I must be saved. I don't care what you have to do, God, in my life. I want to be saved. Amen. I understand that physical healing is important sometimes, but folks, I'm going to tell you something. In my opinion, spiritual healing is much more important. In Jesus' name, praise God. God can help us to get a hold of this and help us to be very, very, very comfortable with it. First John chapter number 4 and verse number 14, it says, And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. That's why accepting what Jesus Christ has done is so very, very, very important. And again, I want to emphasize, that's not just accepting that once. That's accepting that over and over and over and over again, praise God. It's one of those things that we have to remind ourselves of on a daily basis, praise God. And that's why when Peter made that, that clarion call, can you, can, you, can, you, can you say it with me? Let's, let's quote Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. Well, the next verse, I think, is just as important. Come on. He said, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And how many in this room believe that God's still calling people? Come on, I do too. I believe he's still calling people, praise God. And that's what he's doing. He called me in the prayer room. He's calling me out here. He's calling me everywhere in the name of Jesus. And I'm so glad, praise God, that we can receive that in the name of Jesus. As I mentioned before, Jesus said, but you shall receive power. That word comes from the Greek word that means authority. There's authority that God brings into our lives. It says, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, praise God, unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth, praise God. If you really look at it from the standpoint of um, logistics, one of the furthest points from Jerusalem, I'm talking about on the globe now, okay? One of the furthest points on the globe 
from Jerusalem is in New Zealand. And do you realize at that furthest, furthest point, do you want to know what that city is called? Christ's temple. I don't think that's a coincidence. Well, I believe that God meant what he said, not only in Jerusalem, not only in Judea, not only in Samaria, but it's going to be in the uttermost parts of the world. And literally, we have seen that happen, that this gospel is being preached right now in all the world. Amen. God fulfills his promise. That promise of Acts 2 and 39 is being fulfilled right now while you and I sit in this room. He is preaching the gospel. The gospel is being preached. The spiritual healing plan of salvation is being presented to everyone who wants it in Jesus' name. Oh, folks, I'm going to tell you something. That thrills me. That thrills me. I think that is a neat situation, praise God. And so this is why, again, we go back to our, one of our scriptures here, and then I'm going to take you to one that I feel like is really important here tonight. But First Peter again, who his own self bear our sins. That's why you and I can get real spiritual healing. Amen. Listen to me, folks. Let me just try to simplify it with you. The Bible says that God is spirit. And so the connection that we need to have with God is a spiritual connection. Now, do you understand why if that connection is going to remain powerful, that there has to be a spiritual healing? Well, the only way that that connection can come together, in my opinion, is through true forgiveness and true remission of sins. And when that happens, my friend, that just flows that blood of Jesus Christ into every aspect of my life. Amen. That's why I don't have a problem with worshiping God in spirit and in truth because this is what he gave to me through true spiritual, spiritual healing in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. The good news here is, folks, is in 1 John chapter number 4 and verse number 19 is that we can love him. And you want to know why we can love him? Come on, there you go. We can love him because he first initiated it into our lives. The scripture says in Romans chapter number 5, you need to check this out. It says that the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Everybody say the Holy Ghost is spirit. I'm telling you right now, the love of God abides in our life through true spiritual healing. That's what brings it, my friend. Now, I understand that a lot of physical things can happen, praise God, because of that. But make no mistake about it. I'm telling you, God wants to bring true physical, or not physical, but spiritual healing into yours and my life every day in Jesus' name. Let me, let me illustrate this. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Mark, chapter number 2. The Gospel of Mark, chapter number 2. I made reference to this last week, but I thought I would do it again tonight because I think this is so important. Got to understand, our greatest teacher is Jesus. Can somebody say amen? It's just that simple. Amen. That's why I, 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 I'm, I'm constantly going through this, this Bible because God teaches me things, new things every day. Praise God. It was kind of cool today. One of the things that God is helping me to become better at is storytelling. Yeah, and not just any stories. I'm talking about biblical stories. I had three... Um, uh, 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 Spanish guys were, was in my class along with about, I think, two or three other guys. But I, I was in there, and I began, and I told them a couple of stories. And you, I wish you could have, I wish I, well, they won't let me take my phone in there, so I couldn't do it. But I wish I could have taken pictures or a video of those three guys sitting there. They were just, it was like they, you, they were just mesmerized by these stories. And God, again, illustrated me the simplicity that we need to bring the gospel to these people with. Just telling them a word story. And each and every one of them could understand exactly what I was saying. And you could tell in their little, not little, but in their minds, they were just, it was just, it was, it was like a movie going on. Praise God. Well, listen, folks, again, we're not the author of that. Where did we get that from? You got it. We got it from Jesus. That's what he did. He went throughout the land, and he told stories. He gave them, you know, um, uh, illustrations of what could happen, praise God. And one of the reasons he did that was so that they could get it. You got to understand, you know, the spirit that was in him was that of Almighty God. He could have came up, and he could have preached formulas. He could have preached all kinds of things that would have went right over their head. 
But he chose not to do that. He chose to simplify it so that they would get it. Well, I think this is one of those illustrations that you and I can get that we can see what, what's really what the priority of spiritual healing is. And here it is. Look at Mark chapter number 2 and verse number 1. The scripture says there, Sister Carnegie, yeah, thank you, thank you. The Bible says, and again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noised or it was reported that he was in the house. Jesus couldn't go too many places that people wouldn't find out where he was at. He just had a way of bringing a crowd together, didn't he? Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, and straightway or immediately many were gathered together. And it says, insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door. And the Bible says, and this is what I, I, I'm going, that's why my stories, folks. He preached the word to them. Amen. That's why my stories have always got a lot of the word in it. Amen. I believe in that. I, that's why I want you to understand. I believe in stories. I believe in telling people illustrations so that they can get it. But I don't exclude the word. Because it's the word that saves them. Don't ever forget that, folks. Don't ever forget that. Amen. Stories don't save people. Stories might well help people to understand what can save them. But believe me, it's only the word that can save them. And the scripture says, it says in verse number 3, And they came unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four, which basically was being carried by four. Okay? Here's a guy that needs to be healed. Can you say amen? I think we all can agree with that. There's no question about it. This guy needs a physical healing. Okay, well, the Bible says, And when they could not come nigh or come near unto him for the press or because of the people of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy laid. Yeah. Now, catch the, you know, I, I, I think we used this last week in physical healing. I mean, here he is bringing them right down, right in the midst of them. I mean, whoa, talk about getting everybody's attention. Yeah. Well, the scripture says when Jesus, and this is something I've used over the years, he saw something. He didn't just see a roof being tore off. He saw somebody having faith. You've got to understand, God sees you when you have faith. I believe that. That's why it's important for us to, to, to uh, make an effort in that, re in that regard. I told you last week about my little dilemma with my back, and that's what I was doing. I was saying, God, I'm going to have faith in you. I am going to have faith. And throughout the day, I just reminded myself, I'm going to raise up my hands, and I'm going to say, God, you're my healer. You are going to heal my back. It's This pain is just temporary, and it's going to go in Jesus' name. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. I'm a testimony of that because later on this last week, it just went. I can't explain it to you. All I can tell you is what happened. But I'm going to tell you something right now. I believe it happened directly because I had faith in God. And God saw that faith. And I believe this is something you and I must get back to the simplicity of. is showing God every day that we have faith in Him. Come on, it's not trying to win God or trying to get brownie points or anything like that. It's basically what is needed in life to reach God. And so the scripture says Jesus saw that. He saw that these guys had faith. And he's about ready to take an opportunity and watch the opportunity that he took. What did he address first? I'm talking spiritual healing here, folks. Now, it wasn't that Jesus wasn't interested in, in not in healing this young man. But Jesus saw the inner need. And this is what you and I can rest assured that when we're dealing with people, praise God, this is what God wants to do for them. Now, maybe a physical healing will draw them closer to him. Oh, I'm not going to argue with that point. But the bottom line is, in this particular instance right here, where it was obvious this man needed a physical healing, Jesus bypassed the physical healing and said, I'm going to heal his spirit. And that's exactly what he did when he introduced, I believe, the plan of salvation with forgiveness. Amen. And that's what he did. But look at the reaction. The Bible said that the re religious movement of that day, whoa, they're going, what is this? What's going on here? And Jesus makes a point here. It says in verse number 8, and immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, notice where it came from. 
that they so reason within him themselves, he said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your heart? Listen to me, folks. we got to get back to the place that no matter what people have done, no matter what life has made them look like right now, that God wants to bring true spiritual healing into every person's life. That's why I feel like the church needs, well, Jesus told us to go ye therefore into all the world and preach the what? Come on, it's the gospel that saves, isn't it? Come on. And this is what you and I must get back to the simple practice of, is that people need to hear, and I believe they need to hear it over and over and over and over again that they can be spiritually healed, praise God. But there's not six ways to get healed. There's not ten ways to get healed. There's only one way to get spiritually healed, and that's by the blood of Jesus Christ. We read the scripture tonight in First Peter when it says he took his body and let it come on a cross, and he allowed his blood to be shed so that you and I would have a recourse in this life, praise God. And like Jesus, he wasn't working backwards. He was working forward, praise God. I, I'm going to tell you again, I believe that if people could come to the realization of real true spiritual healing in their lives and walk in that light, I believe a lot of physical healings could come a whole lot easier, praise God, because the blood flows. And I'm going to tell you something, when that blood flows, there is nobody, praise God, that, 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 that won't be affected. I'm telling you, once that blood begins to flow into a person's life, I'm telling you something, it's going to be absolutely different from then on out, praise God. And so tonight, I don't know where you're at. Maybe there's something in your life that you need. Maybe there's something physically that needs to happen. I'm not going to argue with that. But, you know, I think tonight, in lieu of this lesson right now, I think it would be a good thing if we would stand to our feet and we would begin to thank God for the blood. We would begin to thank God for being baptized in the name of Jesus. We would begin to thank God for what he has done in our lives. Come on, folks, I'm going to tell you something. I don't think we can ever do this enough in the name of Jesus. Oh, we can never, ever do this enough in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus Christ. Mm. Come on, the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, that's right, that's right. Come on, go ahead and take your liberty. Take your liberty. Let the blood run over your soul and spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. Oh, I'm telling you, folks, that's it. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Almighty God. Praise you, Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for the blood that cleanses us, keeps on cleansing us. It gives us renewed hope every day. We can come to you, God, and we can confess our faults to you. We can get in complete agreement with you. And, Lord God, your blood, you are faithful. You're going to cleanse us from all iniquity. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord God. That's it, Lord God. We do that. That's what this church is all about. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Oh, what a mighty God. What a mighty God that we serve. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood, thank God for the blood that washes, come on, white as snow, thank God for the blood, let's do that, thank God for the blood, thank God for the blood that washes white as... Come on, I'm talking about the Lord. Thank God 
for the blood. Oh, thank God. Amen. For the blood. Thank God for the blood that washes why One more time. We can do it. Oh, thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood that washes white as snow. Come on, the Bible says that he looks at us now like, a, like snow, praise God. We are white in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your blood. Thank you for spiritual healing. Thank you for, for the blood that keeps on cleansing no matter what in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord God. Blessed be to the name of the Lord in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. This week, we're as a church, we're, we're trying to engage in fasting and praying, which is a way that God gives to us to become a little more sensitive to things. And then, of course, Saturday afternoon, late Saturday afternoon around 5, we will have a co collective prayer meeting here. I hope that you'll, you'll think about attending, praise God. These prayer meetings have been very powerful, the ones that we have every month. And so can th think about that. That's going to happen the rest of this week. Tomorrow night, ladies, if you have some time and you want to come to Sister Carnahan's house, she has a book study that she's been doing um, uh, that, uh, that they've been doing now for several months. And so she'll be doing that tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at, um, at her at the home. And so even if you've never come before, if you want to come, you know, for the first time, you're sure welcome to do that in Jesus' name. Lord bless you. Yes. Yeah, we've been announcing that. It's on the calendar and all that type of thing. Oh, yes, it's been on the calendar. And so, yeah, we have lots of opportunities in this church that you can take to draw closer to God. And so the Lord bless you folks in Jesus' name. God bless you. Amen.